Okay, right, welcome everyone. That's a pretty good showing, actually, for the last week of term when you also have a deadline at two o'clock. So, uh, that's very good. Right, so, supersonic flow part two. You will need a bit of paper, just in case you've not brought your previous bit of paper with you. And it's the that you this bit that we're after. You might want one of those if you need some sort of caffeine and chocolate uh, thing. But there we go. Right, so let's get on with this. And what happened before was that the, the first supersonic lecture, if you like, was concerning the shocks themselves. So the diagram that hopefully you've got, the reminder is, you'll find this one on the left-hand side. This extension is in the books, but generally isn't always shown. But you can see the general idea that all of these Mac lines in that sense of particular map number has a particular line and it's like a parabola. For outside flow, so if you're flying along on a wing, it is what's termed the weak part, so the answer is down here. The standing shock wave, the really strong one, if you like the one that turns up in transonics and whatever, or the one that often turns up inside engines, is at the top part. So you can see these dividing lines along here. So anything above the horizontal line, that's strong. Anything below that continuous horizontal line is weak. So the idea is that if your answer is in the weak shockwave area, the supersonic flow before the shock and then there's supersonic flow after the shock, but if you're in a strong shock wave, it's so strong it takes so much energy away that supersonic changes to subsonic flow. Okay, so there's a nice little equation down there, and the idea of the graph is the following. You work out stream of molecules, free stream, <coughs> coming towards the wing. They get deflected because of this thing, this wing, this aircraft. How the angle of the solid object so, for example, if it's, you can see here that there's a ramp of degrees theta from the horizontal. So, in other words, from the angle of the flow to the angle of the deflection is theta. You then read it up until you find the right Mach number curve for the free stream Mach number, and then you take it across to find what the shock wave angle is, also to the direction of the flow. Okay, as you can see here, that beta is that whole angle from the horizontal up to the shock wave here, on the assumption, as you can see, that the flow is coming in absolutely horizontal, it's in the axis. Okay, so we had to look at these before. So, a quick recap. So, diamond aerofoil, half angle 8 degrees, angle attack 4 degrees. So each of those parts there is 8 degrees and 8 degrees. So it's actually 16 subtended at the nose, half up, half down. However, it's not a zero degree case. It's a four degree angle attack. Question, what's the deflection angle theta on the upper and lower surfaces? Four and twelve. Absolutely right. So the question in your mind is, which one is four and which one is twelve? So... You might say it's obvious. <coughs> so the upper surface, um, let's say I've got the upper surface here, lower surface there, and we've tipped it up. So this one here is getting less of an angle, more shallow. So it's going from 8 degrees to 4. The bottom surface, 8 degrees to the flow, but on a pitch up in that sense, if you like 4 degrees angle of attack, it's actually equivalent now to putting a wedge of 12 degrees in there. So, what have we got? Let's see, we don't know what the Mach number is on this one. And we've got Mach 2 flow here. So what we got a diamond aerofoil, half angle of 8 degrees, and angle attack of 8 degrees. What's your deflection angle then? A trick question, but it's actually reality. So, the deflection, let's see, the angle of attack is 8 degrees, but the actual half angle of the cone is 8 degrees as well. So there's going to be a big difference now between what the flow molecules perceive is going to be the upper surface and the lower surface. 
So, what's it going to be on the top surface? 8 degrees goes down to what? Zero. Bottom surface, 8 degrees, then becomes 16. You would be able to look up a 16 degree angle of deflection in a Mach 2 flow on that funny little diagram piece of paper that you've got. However, the important one is the shock structure. How many shocks now do I have? Do I have two or do I have one? Usually, the previous example, I had two. What have I got now? One. So, why horizontal flow comes along and at the top surface, it doesn't encounter anything. It's horizontal. So therefore, there's nothing there. Bottom surface now is acting at 16 degrees. So, there's definitely a shock wave there. Okay, well done. So your job on these is to not only be able to predict the shock wave angle, but you need to predict the pressure, the density and the temperature using the formulae that were given before in the previous lecture. Once you've got the pressures on each of the region 1, region 2, region 3, region 4, region 1 is free stream and may not be given because all of these are ratios. So your job is to find the pressures on all the surfaces of this particular wing and then convert that into a force by deciding on what the area is. So the area encountered would be the area of the side of each of those multiplied by the span. So in other words, for region two, it's the area that goes all the way along here times the span. And if the span isn't given in a question, you assume it's one meter and say it's per unit span. Region three, the area, so all the pressure is acting on here and it would be this area here times the span and so on for region five and for region four there. Once you've got your force, you then convert it into the lift direction and the drag direction, and then you add all of them up. So you've got four forces in this case, convert four of them, and add them up, and that will tell you how much lift and how much drag you've got. And then if you like, you can convert it into a coefficient. That's your job in the tutorials at the moment for this week.